for me kasi ano uh, it's always the first na tinitingnan nila ng bata is uh, y- y- support coming from the family yeah. and second is from his environment mm-hmm. and uh, what's what's a good thing about this is uh, I, I didn't really force him to play so I just told him na when he's the one who got interested in playing basketball and when when he saw his friends playing basketball also so then I, he transferred in a good school and now he um, they got him to play for the for the team I just told him na, okay if you want my advice uh, I'll just uh, give you some tips and then I'll give you some drills and then uh, but I cannot coach you you need to follow your coach and uh, and that's it and I think uh, with that kind of support uh, I'm not the uh, important thing is I'm not forcing him. So you don't necessarily want him to have a basketball career. It's up to him for you. Yeah. Uh, well, yes, when he was small. and But now that he's very much interested uh, in, in this sport. Uh, and the good thing is uh, when he transferred in the States, not only he developed his skills, but also his study habits and he's doing well and he's getting high grades and, and that's um, what I'm really proud about him. When he received um, men- multiple offers in the States for different colleges, did you advise him to take UCLA or did you give your um, advice to which school to pick? Uh, no, I actually I, I was surprised that uh, there are really college teams uh, who are really interested in him so I talked to his coach and I told his coach and I told Kobe and I really can't give you an advice because I don't know anything about schools in the States so uh, um, I, the coach just told me na, I think it's better for him to go to UCLA and like this like that and uh, we just follow his advice and then I they let the coach from UCLA, Steve Alford, to talk to him and he said, uh, yes, Dad, I'm, I think I'm okay with this. So so that's it. I, I didn't uh, force him again <laughs> to, to go to a college that uh, I want to for him. Was it tough at first, especially when he left for the United States, to not have him around as much anymore? And how long did it g- take you to get used to not having him in the country since he was in Los Angeles? Actually, it, until now, it's really hard for me. Like, uh, I'm used to waking him up every morning and then bring him to school. So every morning, I'll just wake up and go to his room, and you know, it's empty. So uh, what I do is uh, every morning I just uh, text him, and he'll text back. Then, are you free? Okay, I'll call him, and so that's the only way we communicate. And it's, it's a good thing. Uh, there's a, we have um, good technology now <laughs> that we can uh, talk to. Uh, we can talk to Viber and FaceTime. Yeah. So yun lang. So would you say that even um, with him in Los Angeles and you guys on the other side of the world, the bond and the closeness between you, him, and Andre still remain very strong? Yes. Um, actually, I think yeah. It's. The, well, for me first, the good thing uh, that I'm happy also that um, he's uh, living in the States is he became more mature. He became independent. He fixed uh, his bed. Uh, he do some errands in um, his dorm. So that's for me. It's 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 a, it's a one of the, one of um, a, a good achievement for for him. Uh, to learn learn about life aside from basketball, and um, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's mm-hmm. it.